Hello, I'm DC Fontana. I'd like to tell you a little bit about a film on which I will be executive producer. It's called Still Waters. I've known Nathan Atkinson since 2008, and I know him to be a talented and intelligent writer-director. When he brought this script to me for my comments, I was engaged instantly. It was a story based on a printed story by Robert Sheckley. Mr. Sheckley has always been one of my favorite science fiction writers. And it's a wonderful story. It's a story about love lost, friendship gained. It's a story told with humor and with a wonderfully poignant climax. I was engaged by it instantly. And I said, we have to do this. So we started putting together a team that will make this movie. Pat McClum will be our visual effects supervisor. Pat has been nominated for Oscars twice for True Lies and for uh, Armageddon for his work in visual effects on those films. He will be working with us getting the effects, especially for the asteroid, the look of the asteroid and the place in which our story is set. And some of the set extensions, you know, the, the, the surface of the, of the asteroid, you know, the, the mountains or the hills and so forth or broad expanses, we'll probably do this as a digital extension. Even we can get a little bit of a, of a slight coloration, if, if that's called for, you know, a little bit of a nebula, just to give something that breaks up the, the background, because everyone's seen a star field. The spaceship most likely will do a miniature, I, th I think. Uh, you know, it's still a, sort of a toss-up as far as miniatures or digital, you know, and I think we could best achieve this effect with a miniature in this show, you know, for the, the ship landing and so forth. You know, suspension on the landing skids and what have you, so, uh, you know, lights, that sort of thing. I would like to age uh, the ship, even though it probably wouldn't age sitting out there, but it shows you the passage of time, and certainly the, the robot will, will have picked up nicks and scrapes and dirt and so forth. Now, even though I do visual effects, uh, it, it has to be a compelling story. John Goodwin is an experienced makeup effects artist. He is also an Emmy winner for his work on CSI, Crime Scene Investigation. John is particularly good at aging process, and our hero in the story has to go from age 40 to age 90. And here is John explaining how this might be done. Well, it all depends on the actor, of course. This was, uh, you know, just an overnight kind of thing. It was a spot for the New Jersey lottery. And the idea being that a guy goes out and you get checks. If you win, you get checks throughout your entire lifetime. So we started out with this fellow. What I did was he had a little bit of a receding forehead there. So I laid hair in there. And uh, so then we, we took the the hairline back a little bit. We did a little bit of painting. He's grown a mustache. Then we took more of the hair off. Um, and that was, this is a better shot of the, the finished, finished version. So he's still going out to get his checks when uh, he's in his 90s, you know. Um, it's, I think, probably one of the cheapest things uh, a producer can do to nail a passage of time is an age makeup. Our art director and visual effects director will be Robert Skotak. Robert has won Oscars and BAFTAs for both Aliens and Terminator 2, and worked on many, many major films. Uh, he will be especially paying attention to our special prop, Charles, the robot, who plays such an important part in this film. And here's Robert to tell you a little bit more about how things will be done on Still Waters. This, you have to look at both science fiction, but you have to look at a lot of science. I'd say Alien is probably a very, very strong influence. We, we tried to bring some of that into Aliens, and we did it. So in doing uh, Still Waters, we're looking at bringing those elements in, as well as some of the, my own personal uh, likes that I think will dovetail very nicely with the story. Well, when you have a uh, uh, humans interacting with uh, props in a film, uh, there are many cases where I've where personality can sort of entered into this even say you take the most extreme example of non-personality would be something like 2001 you had Hal you had a little disc with a little red light in it and that's it and yet this just the size of it and the simplicity of it and the voice and the handling of that was able to create a character that is entirely memorable so there are great possibilities if you say if you're starting with something as basic as that and you know how to dramatically place that within the story. You've got all kinds of potential. In the case of Charles now, you have a moving, physically moving uh, entity on the set. 
so many possibilities, that's the problem, what we could call an embarrassment of riches in that case. And finally, the most recent addition to our production, who will be doing the voice of Charles, a very well-known and loved actor, my dear friend, Leonard Nimoy. <laughs>